my university days, I know some brothers that were not too tall. I really did not think <laughs> I was never... <laughs> Never so, attracted to them. Say the way it no, is. Never. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. And they were conscious of it. If Zacchaeus was in church today, he would not have a chance to get the best sisters. To be a little bit difficult. Really? Yeah. In, the, in, the, in the church settings that we are having today, if Zacchaeus is not rich, so very well. Very <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <I'm> rich. <laughs> Welcome to the Deep Alive Bible Church Singles Channel. This is Princess and um, on our channel we talk about Christian relationship, we talk about how to court efficiently, how to know the will of God in marriage, to find a man or a woman after God's own heart. We bring to you counsels about finding the right partner and doing marriage the godly way. So today, without further ado, I'm very excited about this topic. We are talking about how to deal with body shaming. And as you know, this is the Deeper Bible Church Singles Group. On this group, we talk about different topics. We talk about relationship. We talk about finance. We talk about health and spiritual matters as well. So... And today we're kind of like talking about health, right? It's basically mental health mainly. And even in some cases, physical health. We have very special, special guest joining us from Canada. Her name is Damilola Ali. She's been a friend for a very long time, like maybe about three years or so, something like that. She's joining us today to talk about this topic. And uh, obviously, you know our other two admins. We have Sister Princess here, and we have Sister Debbie here. And you know, you know how it is, right? So um, I don't need to introduce them. But yeah, just a little bit about my guest before we start talking about this. Damilota is married for four years right now, and counting. She studied chemical engineering did degree did masters she loves this subject so much <laughs> she is actually in about to complete a phd in it so my goodness i don't know how much you love engineering this much <laughs> but it's kind of cool though my name is Dan <laughs> short. that's fine all right so today we're talking about body shaming it's kind of like hot topic right now on social media different people have different takes on it i just want us to start with the first question which is what do you think body shaming is how do you define body shaming basically so i'll give that question to sister princess please find body shaming in your own Okay. So for me, body shaming is just a term, like from the word shaming, you have shame, right? I understand body shaming simply by making fun of somebody or about something in their body, in them, about them, you know, mainly about their physique, you know, how they look and making it cause a kind of shame, like make them ashamed and not proud of that thing, you know, just it can be anything. It can be your skin color, it can be your shape, it can be just anything that people look at and they make fun of it and it makes you feel ashamed, makes you feel bad about that thing that you can't even change. That's how you are. But they like make fun of it. Simply put. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, you, you are right on point. I mean, everybody define it differently depending on how probably you've experienced it in the past. So, I saw this definition online and I think it's very interesting and it probably covers what we are going to talk about today. Body shaming is the act of saying something negative about a person's body. It can be about your own 
somebody or someone else also the commentary can be about a person's size age hair clothes food interesting okay um hair or level of perceived attractiveness i'll just let us talk about it like what do you think guys like, I mean, do you want to do you want to say something i agree with all the definitions i believe it's a condescending and demeaning way of talking about someone regardless of what about it's about them yeah general outlook attractiveness and usually it it comes from a place of insecurity either insecurity from your side or insecurity from the person speaking body shaming it's man it happens a lot these days and it's I would say it is terrible, it's a bad thing for you to see yourself in the lens of what the world term as beautiful because then it is very erratic, like this changes regularly. So it would be bad if your definition of beauty comes from what people think beauty is defined as. 20 years ago, you have to be practically a size zero to be termed beautiful. These days, everybody is adding all the pounds everywhere to be called beautiful. Yeah. So if you keep defining beauty by what people define beauty as, then you will be depressed. That is where depression comes from. Or looking at your beauty from the lens of other people. Beauty, they say, is only skin deep. So most times, as women especially, our confidence sometimes comes from what we look like. Oh, when I look beautiful, then I feel confident. Okay, so what happens when you don't look beautiful, when you don't think you're beautiful enough? Then your confidence yeah. diminishes, right? Yeah. So, personally, your confidence should not stem from something as superficial and fickle as beauty. Someone said beauty is only skin deep. So, today you feel beautiful. Tomorrow, you're almost rich and almost all over the place. <laughs> and then you have, and you have pimples and you don't feel okay. beautiful. So, your confidence is gone. So I believe okay. confidence should come from the core of who you are, the core of the essence of what God has called you to be. One, two, who God says you are, what God says you are, if God says you're fearfully and wonderfully made, regardless of what the word defines as fearfully and wonderfully made, that's not your business. And your confidence should also come from the quality of your character and intelligence. Intelligent people are confident people. So let the world define beauty as what it is. If it's a size zero today, or T comes tomorrow, or a size 14 tomorrow, or figure eight tomorrow, let that be the definition. Because if you go by that, your life will constantly be changed. You, 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 you will be erratic in nature, you'll be depressed. Also, there was a time where you have to have thin lips to be considered beautiful. Now everybody's getting Botox. To have full lips. <laughs> to what end okay. is it going to change? Like to what end? So, I, I, it's 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 a it's a wide it's a wide topic. But yeah. also, it also stems from insecurity. Insecurity. Because it's it's how you see yourself. Like it's a mental thing. What you see in the mirror starts from your mind. So. You perceive your own picture in your mind before you look at yourself in the mirror and then you see what you see. So even if you're an ego and you go to the mirror and you see a hen, you're going to frolic on the floor with fellow hens for a long time before you realize that you can actually soar. So, what you see, what you see of yourself is not what actually okay. in the mirror is what you actually, what you actually have in your mind. So it's okay, not okay. Enough. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, you've been saying a lot of things. We're going to dive into it. Sister Debbie, I just want to get your take on this. Do you think men actually experience body shaming as well? Because it seems like most commonly is mostly directed to men. Do you think men can also experience body shaming? I think it's less on the men than it's on the women, really. Because if you look at advertisements, you will see that uh, you have more of women, uh, the body of women being used to advertise objects, things. 
And so just to tell you that the body of men has become an object somehow. It means to, to pass across a message, it means to attract the viewers. They are around, they are around. We, we are seeing some men now with what's happening in the world today, in the same sex and all of that. But in reality, it's more a problem of women than of men. As you see, many of the experts or people that have helped people to, you know, uh, love themselves, you see that most of the times uh, their, their, their subjects are, are women and not men. When you see a man, you know, puts on weight and he has a big tummy, it's not thinking about going for a surgery to remove the fat in his tummy and so to become so slim and what have you. <laughs> yes, men yes, are, yes, Men yes, are yes. doing it these days, though. Men are doing it these days. <laughs> yeah, but just a few, maybe, maybe for the stars, okay? okay. Like for those that are stars and uh, they have missed it somehow, maybe maritally or something, and then they want to look younger than their age. But really, I don't think they are, they are doing more about their stomach or their body. That they are doing more for, they are doing more maybe for their face to look younger. Mm -hmm. You're to right. Younger. You're right. I, remember, I remember working with, when I was working uh, in my corporate job, I remember some of my managers they always because they are really old <laughs> they always complain about me kind of like because i was working as a graphic designer like they're always saying that i should polish their face to make them look younger i'm like come on man you're already old why why are you still bothered about looking young you know so he's like no no you need to take off this chin <laughs> i have here i'm like take up the wrinkles over here i'm like come on man <laughs> women should be worrying about this not you <laughs> but but it's, it's it's really real i'm not meant to but in a different way obviously so I, I was i was thinking about this like okay so it looks like body shaming is like in various forms and shapes and it's cut across different different things and I, i'm asking myself like so if that's the case what is not body shame anyone should jump in like maybe for example uh, i'll use myself as an example for me i get really conscious of myself if i start like if i'm eating too much of rice and start getting some, some layers of uh, fat on my stomach you know <laughs> so would that classify as body consciousness or you know is no but is it body body shaming is it really about the person it's about what the way the person perceives others was him mm. you know you can have some features that doesn't qualify you to look uh beautiful or handsome according to some standards but you feel okay and no one is bugging you to tell you that oh you have this but, but you're you shaming that. yourself no you look at yourself in the mirror and then you're like come on david that, come on that's <laughs> why i said it stems from insecurity if you love being <laughs> slim and someone comes and says oh you're slim you don't feel bad except you okay. do not like being slim so if you love being thick and someone says oh you think you don't feel bad so it comes from how you see yourself. If I'm already feeling insecure about a certain part of my body and someone announces it and pronounces it, then it bothers me. So usually you're triggered by something that's already bothering you. It starts from within. So you're already triggered. So, so is, that, is that body shaming then? So me saying that to myself, is that body shaming? Oh yeah, you can body shame yourself actually. You don't have to wait for right. to shame you. It's just that you base your standard on beauty on something. It means that you are comparing yourself to someone. There's something that you're looking at as the standard that made you feel quite inadequate about yourself. And it's okay so, that... So what is, what, what is not body shaming? Not body shaming is understanding something. The serenity oh. prayer. The serenity prayer says, God grants me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. Courage to mm -hmm. change things I can and wisdom to know the difference. Now, when there's certain things you can change, for example, you're gaining weight and you don't like it, you can work out. 
Now, the certain things you cannot change. Oh, you have. You think you have a big head. What are you going to do about that? So wisdom applies that you accept, you start to love yourself. Because there's nothing you I'm sure maybe in the nearest future, the surgery school probably that is a lot. I feel like that's a lot. I don't think God created anyone to be self-sufficient. Nobody's self-sufficient. It is okay. There are certain things about yourself that you don't quite feel comfortable with. But wisdom is necessary. Wisdom is applicable to accept that there are certain things I cannot change. So I better start to love those things about myself. Your head is big. There's nothing you can do about it. You are not tall enough. What do you want to do about it? You can, you can help yourself by wearing some heels. Then you go back to being normal when you're not wearing heels. So, understanding the difference between what can be changed and what cannot be changed. Alright, so it looks like you're already talking about like some of the root causes of, of feeling secure about yourself and um, having that, uh, some of the causes of body shame. So, let's dive into that. What are some of the reasons why people need to body shame somebody, for example? Um, sure. Before you jump into that, I had something to add about do men experience body shaming? And I was listening to someone who said that people think that men don't experience body shaming, but you will notice that most women will say, I want a man that is this foot tall, or oh, I want exactly. a man that is slim, <laughs> I want a man that is dark, I don't like a feminine man because it's light in complexion, I don't want a man that has a feminine voice. But this guy has this voice that he cannot change. Does it mean that yeah, he can a man talks with a thin <laughs> voice that he's not man enough? You know? Mm -hmm. And these things can make a guy to feel very uncomfortable in their skin. Because most girls, like on the news, you hear men, some girls saying, I want this TDH man, I want tall, dark, and handsome. Okay, what about the wow. tall, dark, and short? Okay, what about the, I mean, the, the short, dark, and handsome? What about the short, light skin, and not handsome? Or handsome? I mean, no. Beauty is in the, in the eyes of the beholder, right? So, okay. most girls, let's be factual, most girls want to marry a man that is taller than them, except the very tall girls. Those very tall girls, they won't marry a man that's, oh, I want him to be my Same heart. You he don't want to be him to be shorter than me like that. And so they want to wear like a flat heel on their wedding day. But most girls just feel that, I just want to look up to him. Like that's like romantic in their head. So the men that are not so tall and cannot wear high heels <laughs> to increase their height, yeah. what do you think about it? What should they do about it? So men experience some form of body shaming, especially when maybe they propose to a girl or they they want to start a relationship, and the girl is like, yeah, no, no, let's just be friends because I want a taller man. They start feeling mm. bad, or I want a slimmer man, or I want a more huge man, like I want him to have more muscles and everything. And but there are some men that have done everything to get impacts, but they're not getting it, right? So. That, that's a form of body shaming, you know, and it's usually overlooked. And we think that uh, everything's about the woman, but not necessarily. Some men also go through these things that the world is more focused on women, and women are, are talking more, are more outspoken about their pain and whatever it is that's going on with them. And some men don't, many men don't really talk about it, but deep within them and maybe with their bodies, they talk about these things. Like, you know, how they don't feel good and men get depressed too about, about what people say to them but we just think that the men should not because that doesn't make you man enough you need to man up you shouldn't be a cry baby you are a man and everything but men have emotions right they have feelings and if you body shame them so and what, say things about them then it affects them so do do, do christians actually experience this that much i think do, do you think that christians really experience body shame in a lot yeah. like i mean in the christian circle yeah why not it's just human really so how <laughs> how of course for they, example, example give an example for example uh -huh. i know you have spec <laughs> i know you have you have the kind of women that you liked and uh, oh you, my can, God. you can you can you can you say oh she is too this one is too fat that one is too fat that's body shaming that's body oh. shaming 
Oh, you like them a shadow way. So the ones that don't. That's not them, body shaming. That's just me like what I like. Right? Oh, really? Yeah, but you ended up. You, you, the moment you have to say it out to make the other person feel disqualified from your kind of, from your <laughs> sample, that that's that that's the body shame because it affects the person, right? If you say you want, if you're angry that women want to tell, tell that can answer, that you're not told that can answer. Oh yeah, we feel okay. we meant to feel a certain way. You say no, I like them tall, so I meant to like tall women. So what happened to the? That's shop? not body shaming. Is it wrong to have like things that you like in? Body shaming mostly is a statement that lacks emotional intelligence. Okay. Okay. It's about saying the wrong things. It's about saying sometimes the right thing to the wrong person or yeah. the wrong thing at the wrong time. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. Everyone has a spec, but is it necessary for you to tell me ah? You are too short though, you are not my type. Why was that was that necessary? <laughs> Keep those things. Wait, 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 wait. You have to know. <laughs> With full disclosure, I don't say that though. <laughs> so that people that's, that's just an example. <laughs> don't think that I'm saying that. I only express myself. I always say, listen, I like women like this. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong in that. And sometimes yeah, take a step further by saying, Oh, this one is getting far. <laughs> okay okay so now now that you talked about this it's good that's an example do you think men experience something like that in the christian circle of course like men well like expressly it's just that in this age of time well how, how do you how do you how do you express it how does it look like in church like is you finish church service just ended in conversations like i don't think sisters do that to brothers like that i have not seen you don't think i think it's possible it's possible okay. because for example as a as a single in my university days i know some brothers that were not too tall okay. <laughs> i really did not <laughs> I was never <laughs> never so, attracted to them. Say it the way it is. No, never. Say it. Say it. Say, say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Because I, wow. and, and they were conscious of it. I know one. I know a particular one. He was in one okay. of my campuses. He, he got married. Uh-huh. He, he, he's, he's married now, and he's married to sister. I think about the same height. But he knew that a lot of sisters would not want a guy like him because he was not tall. He was so not tall at all. But he was a Christian. Okay. He loved it a lot. He was a choir member. And he's still a believer. So that means it's indirect towards men in church. I think it depends. So for sisters that are Your very sisters outspoken, come out straight and say, ladies that are very bro. outspoken, they will tell you, bro, oh. you're not my type. Don't oh. even try <laughs> to come near me. I'm not even going to look at you. Uh-uh. Say, you know, they will say, ah, this, ah, no, 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 no. I so can imagine if, if, me. If Zacchaeus was in church today, he will not have a chance to get the best sisters. In to church. be a little bit difficult. Really? Yeah, in, the, in, the, in the church settings that we are having today, if Zacchaeus did not, if Zacchaeus hey. not rich, Zacchaeus so very powerful. wealthy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do not rich. <laughs> Very rich yeah, for, for so lot so many of our sisters. That, that's just not the fact. Oh, for so many God. of our sisters, many sisters, his brother Zacchaeus had to be boxed up. <laughs> really boxed wow. up. That would be what will cover up for that in that Then they will say, um, I remember, I just as I'm talking now, I I was talking with one of my acquaintances and she told me that she She's not a. Uh, she, she will say she's a Christian, but the life she lives is not the life of a Christian. So she says that when she was not yet married, she used to be friends with guys, and that she brought one guy also to her brother, her brother, and brother said that you will, this you will present to our father as our brother-in-law. She say, eh? How? How can you say that? No, 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 no. I can't look at him now. Look at his face. Look at the way he looks. Does he look like someone? No, 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 no. And this one, I just love his pockets. You know that kind of thing. Hmm. I just love his pockets. Wow. 
No, not in church because she's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She used to go to church. She used to go to church. So if, you, if you had seen her, you would say, okay, yes. If you talk with her, you would say, I'm a Christian. I can pray. I love the Lord. It is that. I mean, this. Yeah, but there are some things that she does that are not according to my way of living or you know, what I know the Bible teach. But that's what she says. And so many ladies, even sisters, even people in the church, even if they don't say it, even if the sisters don't say it, they think they think it deep down in their hearts. Mm. Okay. So I just changed something no. um being a Christian does not take away attractiveness. What you find attractive is what you find attractive. So Father a Christian does not mean if you like tall people, you like tall people. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if if you, it doesn't you mean, change you, even you even though you're a Christian. Yeah, you I'm not talking about being not materialistic. You. I'm not talking about being materialistic okay. now, but what you what, what's wrong with materialism? What's wrong with materialism? <laughs> if we think that, yes, if we think that, if oh we think God. that, oh that that being a Christian doesn't change who you are attracted to, that you should, it is okay for you not to be attracted to a short guy. Uh-huh. Then. Why should you be attracted to a guy that doesn't have money? Mm. This, this is simple as it's also your preference. You don't want to be with That's someone that doesn't have money. It. But what if he has what it takes to make money? In the future, he doesn't just have attack potential. potential. Yes, that's future. It's not everybody that is ready for the future. My people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rooting for I'm rooting for the potential men. Who, see, all, all these sisters out there that think that uh, just you don't have right now, uh, it means that tomorrow nothing will show. You remember that was when I was on campus as, a, as an undergraduate. I used to remember one of my okay. colleagues that would say that his mother, his father promised his mother that uh, it would be better, it would mm. be good, let us it would be better, but it has never become better. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> yes, it's true that yes, you look at the future, the person can become better, this, that, the other one. But there is there is a way somebody has lived his life for the past 30 years. That if he doesn't he doesn't decide to take a drastic decision that and a drastic determination that he wants to succeed for the next 30 years, he will still live his life the same way. And yeah. he will never succeed. He will, he will yeah. never become you will never get to give you the kind of comfort that and so if you are a woman that you know you cannot tolerate a guy that is not comfortable why do you have to go for a guy that is not comfortable okay so okay. if we say fair, fair there's nothing wrong point. in your attractiveness to a short guy or your your not attractiveness to a short guy and we don't see that as something that you need to deal with and you need to allow mm. god to work on you to say lord mm-hmm. let it be my will you no know, i used to sing this song when i was on campus as an undergraduate not where i wish to be nor where i wish to go for who am i that i should choose my way that song it had a lot of meaning for me mm. because i had what i wanted as a woman but I came to understand God in the sense that I felt that I should be a clay in his hands. Mm-hmm. So know what I want. If it is what I want, what I wish, what I need to do, there, maybe I wouldn't have been even related with some brothers I related with. Wow. <laughs> yes. Wow. Okay. Yes, I would not even allow them to even say, I'm interested, I want to get married to you, or the Lord is willing. No, I will not. Because that's mm. not my will. So, you know, when you're saying this now, it's just, I just, it's, it's just dawning on me that, wow. So, we always think that it's men that have this thing about, okay, this, this, <laughs> this is what I want. In a, in, a, in a sister but it looks like women also have your own thing like where you actually pray for this type of man and there's this type of man that is not it's not even something that cross your mind at, uh, at any point you know so wow 
And women I'm, love food I'm, packages. I'm Let us stop deceiving ourselves. We have to be very factual to each other. Women mm-hmm. love food package. No wow. woman wants some half bread. Mm. So you want and how some guy that when once you come you like yes yeah, that's my husband you want a very intelligent guy but when he opens his mouth you say wow that guy is wow it's brilliant very smart guy <laughs> very smart <laughs> and you want comfort that you are from a comfortable home or you are from an uncomfortable home it doesn't matter you, also, you still want comfort but now when you become a Christian, when you are giving your life to Christ, then when you come to a place of the cross, then you can lay those things at the cross. Mm. And that's why this, this issue of men saying, mm, eh, you know, you have, she has to keep herself, she has to keep herself. You know, they, they, they keep saying, oh, women, women, when they get married, they just lose themselves, they don't, the truth is that women also don't think that women don't when you they are married that they don't see men that are old they will like got a guy smart is well and you have the money yes really yes <laughs> it's a lot of yes wow. the reality check for men oh. yeah <laughs> okay. and the worst sort of it is that for those of us that are in the west I don't know about how it is in Canada, but for those of us that are in the Western, in the French, in the French world, that you are, you are a married woman and you have children, it doesn't mean anything to men. You don't care. They, they still want. They, they still approach you. Mm. You are still likable. You are still. They are still attracted to you. Okay. How does body shaming exist in a relationship, a godly relationship? Mm.